even the ability to hold on, yes. even in the midst of difficulties, O oh Lord, in the midst of challenges yes. and circumstances of life, in the midst of losses, yes. what we've been going through, Lord, yes. we know that you are going to give us ability to hold on yes. and the tenacity to hold on to the yes. truth, O oh God. Yes. We know that the truth is being eroded and the enemy is destroying the, the world. But we know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Mighty God, we give you praise, we give you honor. We give you praise, we give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, somebody put your hands together, give Jesus praise. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I just want to speak to us very quickly from the context of the book of Luke chapter 18. And I'm going to read from verse number 1 to verse number 8. The Bible says, as Jesus told them a parable, do they think that they ought always to pray and not to turn coward or faint or lose heart? Not to give up. And he said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither reverenced and feared God, nor respected or considered man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him saying, Protect and defend and give me justice against my adversary. And for a time he would not, but later he said to himself, Though I have neither reverence or fear for God, nor respect or consideration for men, yet because this widow continues to bother me, I will defend and protect and avenge her, lest, they, lest she keep, give me intolerable annoyance and wear me out by continual coming, or at last she can come rail me, rail on me, assault me or strangle me. I'm reading from Amplified Classic. Then the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says, and I, and will, will not our just God defend and protect and avenge his elect, his chosen ones, who cry to him day and night. Will he defend them? Will he defer them and delay help on their behalf? I tell you, he will defend and protect and avenge them speedily. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find persistence in faith on the earth? Can you repeat those words after me? When the Son of Man comes, will he find persistence in faith on earth? Amen. Now we have to understand the story here. A lot of us, when we preached about it, we have preached about prayer. But I want to show you that the story about this woman literally is not about prayer. It is about persistence of faith. Because we find a woman who has a very big need. And the need is that she needs justice. And she is trying to come to a, a, a judge who actually... She believes that the judge is able to give her justice and to help her and defend her because she's a widow. Nobody's there to fight for her. And when she comes to the unjust judge, he turns her back the first time, the second time, and many times. But the Bible shows us that this woman never gives up. She keeps on coming, knocking back into his office, and he says, Will you defend me and give me justice against my enemies against my adversary and the Bible says he wouldn't for a very long time and then the, the Word of God goes on to tell us that he gets very upset about the whole issue and he says because this widow continues to bother me I will defend and protect and avenge her let she gives me intolerance annoyance and he says that maybe She's going to rail me, assault me, and even strangle me. So this woman was not a play, it was not play. She really wanted what she wanted. She had audacity to stand for what she wanted. My brothers and sisters, when we talk about faith, we're talking about the persistence of it, the audacity. Can you be able to stand 
and declare, I will not give up until I see Jesus Christ face to face. There are so many things that are coming around us that may cause us to feel disturbed, discouraged, and even feeling like you want to throw in the towel. I came to speak to people this week that have been bombarded by situation, circumstances of life, left and right, problems in the family, problems in your finances, you're dealing with children that are disobedient, you're dealing with issues to do with your bills, and you don't know where to turn to. I want to let you know that God is speaking to you today, and He wants to let you know that it's not over, because God is on your side. Don't just give up. God is defending you. He's defending your cause. No matter what is going on. Amen. And the Bible says, I tell you, Jesus, then at the end he says, I tell you, that he will defend and protect, avenge, vain, speedily. Can I say to you, if you are that person, that God is about to avenge you speedily. Amen. He's about to come through your home speedily and deal with any situation that you are dealing with. It's about to defend you from anything that the enemy is throwing up against your life. Glory be to God. If a just judge could be able to listen after such persistence, let me tell you, in God and in our faith, as we persist in God and never give up, the God that we serve, he will take care of every situation. Have you ever been to a place now where you feel like you're throwing in a tower, you want to give up, you want to just throw everything away and just... Just, just give up. Listen, if you have ever been to that place, the word of God is telling you, you can hold on because the God that you serve, he will never give up on you. And no matter what you are going through right now, he will fight for you, protect you, defend you, and avenge you speedily in Jesus' mighty name. I said there is a speedy visitation in your home. A speedy visitation over your needs and your, your, your situation that you are dealing with. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Uh, but the, the, the greatest question here that I, I, I really find it fascinating is when Jesus begins to point out, or the scripture begins to point out, it says, however, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find persistence in faith? How many do we know that they started so well, but no longer walking well with the Lord? How many stood and testified of how God saved them? Yeah. But today they are not here. That's it. They have given up on their faith. That's it. How many preached the gospel of Jesus Christ? I know so many in this town. I'm not talking about somewhere else in this town. People who stood with the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Yes. And brought even so many to the kingdom of yes. God. But yes. today they are nowhere. True. When you meet them today, they have become rebels. And they have also became become reprobate. They don't want to hear anything about God. When you talk to them, they say, don't tell me to come to church. And we say, if we're not talking about church, are you still holding on to the truth? My brothers and sisters, there are many that are giving up on the truth of Jesus Christ. It is not time to give up. It is not time even to play church. Because this is the time really to hold on to what we have. Jesus said, when I come on earth, will I find faith? These last days, faith is going to be very, very, very rare to find. People who are still standing in the truth, people who are still standing in a, in a believing faith, will be very hard to find. I've had a lot of calls from many members of different churches who said, uh, our, our, our man of God stood and he told us, don't, don't go for the, for the vaccine and all these kind of things. And we didn't go for the vaccines, but our man of God has given up himself, he's gone for a vaccine. Now, so, Bishop, what do I do? And you know the answer I'm giving them? We are living in the days of great trial, according to the book of Revelation chapter 3. The great trial is already with us. And I'm not going to tell you, go and take or don't take. All I will tell you, my brothers and sisters, you can't stand on Bishop's faith. You're not going to stand on your mama's or your daddy's faith. Amen. This is the time for you to stand on your own faith. Amen. Ezekiel, the Lord spoke to him as a prophet. He said, Ezekiel, stand on your feet because I want to talk to you. Many of us have been standing on the feet of our others. We've been standing on the feet of our minister. We've been standing on the feet of someone else. 
I'm telling you, this is the time for you to stand on your own feet. Amen. You have to stand on your own faith and defend your faith. Amen. It's not going to be about me. It's not going to be about Bishop. I, I don't have any heaven that I'm taking anybody. I'm also striving to go to heaven. And so if you're looking at me and you're thinking, Bishop, you are going to help me. I can't even help you even right now. Your faith is the only thing that is going to help you. My God, my God, my God. I made up my mind already and I said, me and my family, we are not getting into the system of the world. We are going to stand on our faith. Whether we die or live, for us to live is Christ and to die is gain. We have made up our minds and we are strong about it. I don't know about you. I say I don't know about you. Have you made up your heart? Have you made up your mind that you're not going to give up like this woman? The Bible says she could not give up her faith. She stood until she was defended. What are you going to do? Are you going to stand on your faith or are you going to look around and say, Oh, well, John did it. So the other person is doing it. Oh, yeah, they are going that direction. I'm also going to follow. Are you following Jesus or are you following people? Are you following your mother, your father, your grandmother? Thank God for the praying grandmother. But right now, it's not, not even time to stand for the prayer of grandmother. You've got to know God for yourself. I say you've got to know God for yourself. You've got to know God for yourself. Oh my God, the gospel that you've been hearing since the day you got saved and since the day you came to church, the time is now for you to go back and work out your salvation and make sure you're standing well and standing strong because the days are evil, my brothers and sisters. You see, when I get calls daily of men of God and women of God that the enemy is, is taking them home, yeah. Oh yeah, man, it's not a joke. We are we are not in a playing ground. I have spoken to some people like three days ago and then I hear the next minute they are gone. So this time is not time for us to begin to think who 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 can I can I can I can I stand on on this whose side can I go? It's not even about the church you're going right now. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's not even about the church you're going. Because the church at the end of the day is not going to count. When you get to heaven, Pastor Zoka, God is not going to ask you, did you go to Acts of Faith Ministry? Did you go to what, what, what? No, God is not interested. The question is, have you been standing on your faith to the end? Or have you given up? And I tell you, even these great days of trial, you thinking uh, COVID is, is, is brought dead. There are more coming. Oh yeah, you may say, Bishop, you are a prophet of doom, but there are more coming. I'm telling you, there are more issues that are going to come. And if we are going to cave in only on this one, I wonder where you're going to be when everything goes uh, even to the next level. But I want to tell you this thing. When, 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 if you say, Bishop, but what is the solution? If they came to me and they said, oh, now what do I do this? How do I do this? Let me tell you how you, you're going to do it. When they say to you, you can't walk. And you feeling, should I take it? Should I not take it? Don't I call Bishop and ask him, what do I do? Let, let me tell you what you're going to do. The Bible says, is there anybody in trouble? Mm. Let him pray. Amen. Am I speaking to somebody? The Bible says, is there anybody in trouble? Let him pray. Is there anybody happy? Let him sing praises. Now, when you are in trouble, what do you do? Pray. My God, this is the time to know who to pray to. If your prayers have not been working because you're putting your trust on your, your, your pastor or to the, the, your, your trust on a woman of God, this is the time to understand now I've got to put my trust in God. So I tell you what, is there any trouble going on? Pray. Are they threatening to kill you? Pray. What did disciples of Jesus do? The Bible says when they heard the threatenings, that they were, not, they were going to be killed. What did they do? The Bible says, and they came together in the book of Acts chapter 4. When you look at verse number 30 and, and verse 31, Acts chapter 4, verse 30 to 31. What did they do? They didn't cave in and they said, oh, well, yeah, we have to hide our heads, stick, stick our head in the sand now. You, 
know what? Those days where they were walking in swords in the church is coming. They walk with guns in the house of God. And they will say, who are for Jesus and who are for not? I don't know where you'll be standing. I don't know where you'll be standing. But it, it, there was threatenings. And the threatenings was not a small thing because they had already killed some of the apostles. And now they were being threatened to be killed. Let us read that scripture. Look at what they did. Acts chapter, chapter 4. Are you able to navigate that? Or... Glory be to God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. I feel something is about to break loose. Amen. The Bible says in uh, from verse 29. And now observe. This, this, this was the apostles now. Alright. This is where the apostles pray. Uh, verse 29. The Bible says. Now Lord look on their threats. And grant to your servants 